Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody's doing well. And today I'm gonna to talk about eight facts about the mafia that you may not know. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody's doing well. All is good on this end. You know, I have to admit, I'm not a mafia historian. I don't read a lot of books on the mafia. I do watch movies, basically basically for entertainment. You know, we review uh, movies here on Mob Movie Monday. Everybody seems to enjoy that. But I don't consider myself a mafia historian. I don't know why. Maybe I just don't have an interest in going way back and seeing the origin of the life and so on and so forth. I kind of lived that life. I experienced that life first with my father, who was pretty much a legend in the life, and then obviously through my own experience, which you're all pretty familiar with. But there are some things that I am interested in. I think you'll be interested. And today I'm going to talk about eight facts about the mafia that you may not know. Number one, you do not need to be Sicilian to be a member of the Mafia. You don't need to be. You need to be Italian. Your father needs to be Italian. At one time, you had to be a Sicilian. Another time, they changed that. You only had to be Italian. And now they changed it to only your father has to be Italian. That was true through my, area. So you, through my era. So you don't have to be Sicilian to be a member of the mob. The reason for that is because there are different mob groups throughout Italy. Fact number two, uh, Naples. The Camorra, that's another mafia group. They're smaller. I think they have about 4,500 members, and uh, they're known to be a pretty brutal group. I happen to be uh, from Naples, Napoli Don. I'm not saying I'm brutal. I'm just saying I just happen to be from Naples, as was my father. My mom and dad are both from Naples, but that's another group. They're called the Camorra, and there are a number of them here in the United States also. Fact number three. Uh, Calabria, another city in Italy. There is the Calabrian group, Calabria Mafia. It's called Drangheta. They're kind of an offshoot of uh, the Cosa Nostra, and um, I think they're known, unfortunately, for uh, cocaine trafficking. And uh, by the way, in Naples, too, a lot of drugs. Cocaine trafficking, that's a big thing for Camorra. I also know that they are pretty well established in Australia. I got to meet a few guys back then when I was over in Australia. So that's another group. So fact number four. The Sicilian Mafia, which is Cosa Nostra, this thing of ours, uh, is the biggest of the Mafia group. It's the origin of the Mafia, really began in Sicily, I think, back in the 1800s. It's the model for all other Mafia groups, and it was the first group, uh, Mafia group that came here to the United States. We talked about that once before. They first settled, actually, well, first showed up in New Orleans, I think around 1870. Then they went to New York and Chicago and Kansas and Florida. You know the whole deal. So the Sicilian Mafia, really the model. Another fact, the Puglia Mafia. Puglia is a small city, I think, in the uh, uh, southeastern part of, um, of Italy. And uh, they're called a Sacra Corona Unita. Sacra Corona Unita, which means United Sacred Crown. It's the smallest of all the mafia groups. They're known to be smugglers. They smuggle a lot of things in from Eastern Europe. I think they associate with a lot of the uh, uh, organized crime uh, gangs from Eastern Europe. They smuggle cigarettes and arms and probably drugs too. Um, you know, like I said, in Italy, they're more drug dealers than they are in the United States. Another fact that you're probably not aware of, I've gotten blowback on this all the time because you people read different things, but you don't really know the truth. The drug business during my era in this country was outlawed. I'll give you some proof of that. It was on an FBI recording, a tape recording, between John Gotti and one of his guys, Angelo Ruggieri. Remember Quack Quack from the movie Gotti? You know, I, we talked about that in a mob movie Monday. Uh, and in that conversation, uh, Angelo tells Gotti, listen, I found out there was a conversation between the Chin Gigante, and Chin was the real boss of the uh, uh, Genovese family, I'll get into that, and um, Paul Castellano, that no drugs and anybody suspected of being involved in drugs in any way, any made member suspected of involvement in drugs in any way was to be killed on the spot. No meetings, no commission meeting, no proof, nothing needed 
killed on the spot. And the reason for that, because they believe that anybody dealing with drugs uh, was more susceptible to becoming an informant. And that was, that was uh, decided between the two bosses of the two most powerful families. It's on tape. And I told you people that in our family, the Colombo family, Persico, no drugs. We weren't allowed to get involved in it. I told you a story about a close friend of mine who was a made guy, uh, uh, Tony uh, the Gawk, big Tony the Gawk, who blew his brains out in a phone booth because he was afraid. He got involved in a drug deal. He knew he would get killed. And uh, he, rather than getting walked into a room, he killed himself. There was no drugs allowed during my era you can take that to the bank. Now, I'm not saying that some guys weren't doing it. They might have been doing it, but they weren't supposed to. It was outlawed. The proof of that, the conversation between the Chin Gigante and Paul Castellano at the time. Another fact you may not know, the real boss of the Genovese family was Gigante. And this was a known fact. The FBI picked it up on a number of surveillance tapes on conversations between Fat Tony Salerno uh, Tony Ducks, I think they caught him on tape, talking about Chin being the real boss. Chin did not want the exposure. He wanted to last as long as he could. Uh, he, tried, he took over, by the way, in 1981, uh, when Benny the Squint Lombardo stepped down. He took over. It was, it was a peaceful takeover. There was no uh, confrontation about it, no argument about it. But he was the real boss, but he didn't want the exposure. So he enlisted Fat Tony to be kind of his, his guy. But I can tell you this, Fat Tony didn't do anything without putting it on record first with Chin. He was the real power. That's for sure. You could take that to the bank again. It was very well known. I met with Chin once or twice because he sent for me. A really good friend of mine who was another made guy under Chin, Fritzy Givinelli, he passed away now. He took me to see Chin. He and I walked on, along Houston Street. We discussed a number of things. And I will tell you this, Chin Gigante had a lot of respect for my dad. And Chin told me, he said, look, if you have any problem whatsoever with Persico, because there wasn't any love loss there, he says, you let me know, I'll bring you into my family. He made me that offer. Just want you to know that. But uh, he was the real power. Another thing, and I've been getting some blowback on this because people are telling me, Michael, the books, okay, and you know that expression, the books were open uh, when they were bringing in new guys into the family in 1976, somebody says, somebody said 77, another person said 78. Not true. The books were open in early 70s. Proof of that, Vincent the Chief Cafaro, he was a, uh, a soldier under uh, the chin and under Fat Tony. He and I got friendly when we were in MDC together. We were locked up together. But he became a cooperating witness, and he let everybody know when the books were open. They were open up in the early 70s. He was made in 1974. Fact. I was made in 1975. So all this stuff that you're hearing, I have no reason to lie. If I was made in 76 or 77, I would tell you. It happened in 75. The books were open earlier than that. Vinny the Fish, Cafaro, read it. It's true. It's in FBI documents and 302s and all of that. That's a fact. So I think these are things that could be interesting to you. I'm not going to overwhelm you. There are a lot more facts that I can start to give you, things that I have personal knowledge of. Uh, because remember, I was around a lot of guys. You know, my father was not a historian. The stories he told me, the, th the education he gave me, some of the old timers that I was around, Persico and all the other guys, you know, we sat down in our social clubs and we would talk and there was just a wealth of information that came my way. So I'm going to keep filling you in with things that I think are interesting. But uh, what I tell you today, you can take to the bank. It's all a matter of fact. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, we're going to keep the content going. Subscribe. We got a lot of things coming up. Larry Lawton, it's coming up soon. Going to be interviewed by him first on his platform. Then he's coming over to my platform. We have over 6,500 members. MichaelFrancis.com, in my crew, 6,500 members. You people are enjoying it. I wish I can get some of the members on here to talk to you about what an amazing experience and encouraging experience it's been to all of them. So join. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. You want to get into the inner circle? Yeah, you're going to pay a little bit money to have more access to me. But again, I put my heart in these things, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So that's it for today. I'm going to leave you with this. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless all of you. I'll see you next time.